Cool. Everyone, welcome back to another episode. And today I am super, super excited uh, for many reasons. Um, but firstly, because I owe a huge credit and gratitude to Andrew. Um, when I first launched my coaching business back in March 2020, it wasn't long that Andrew started popping on my feed, sort of seeing all of his Stripe accounts popping off. And uh, I think within about seven minutes of Marco, I think it was at the time, closing me, uh, <laughs> I had signed up to his high ticket program. And it was the first big investment that I'd made in my own education. Um, within, I think, 30 days, I had my money back. And then I had the pleasure of being in Andrew's world for uh, about nine or 10 months thereafter before, obviously, you exited. And obviously, we can maybe talk about that if you're allowed. Um yeah. yeah, so welcome, Andrew. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Dude, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to talk about all that more. <laughs> so I think going back to that, I think it's a good place to start. Um, the the I guess for you, you had this huge business that you'd scaled very quickly. You'd obviously put the teams in place, and that's the model that you taught. And I don't know whether it's just my algorithm, the algorithm at the minute, but it seems like everybody is sort of like going the total opposite direction now of like, let's not have teams and let's just be a solopreneur and make as much profit as we can. Um, do you think that the old model that you had is still, well, it is still viable, but are you seeing that shift as well? Or And, and what, what kind of played up for you in terms of why you exited that business? Because I think I felt towards the latter few months before the exit was announced, I could definitely see your energy was drained out of that business. Like Andrew that I met on the first initial call wasn't the Andrew at that point. Yeah. To answer the second question first, that was the big driver of exiting, selling, finding a buyer, all that stuff. Um, was I've been running that company for four years and it was just, I wanted to profit more and more each quarter. And every single quarter we grew from yeah. zero to over 300 K per month. And it was the first quarter where we actually dropped and so much of my ego was wrapped up into it where it just couldn't handle it. And there were other life events like getting in a car accident and going through a breakup and all that, where I was in the position to be able to sell and I had made the money that I wanted to make and made the impact that I wanted to make. And, um, it was time for me to take time off. So I was able to sell it. Um, just signed a one month independent contractor agreement. I was in like six different conversations with potential buyers. There was only one that was like, yeah, you can just stay for a month. And I'm like, okay, great. <laughs> um, and it was one of the best decisions I ever made because it gave me a whole year of just like reconnecting with myself, traveling, not having to worry about anything whatsoever um, and kind of redefine my life. Um, so, yeah, overall, it was, it was great experience and like I have I have no regrets around it. Um, and then with the industry right now, man, yeah, there's a big shift happening with school coming online. I think that's one of the big shifts is that a lot more people are getting used to the like $97 a month, like 297, that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's gonna swing back and forth over time because a lot of people are joining these low tickets, forgetting about it, and then like, they're not getting the result that they actually need. And we like high ticket right now, we need to devote our time to it um, and actually get the coaching that we need um, and all of that stuff. Um, and I think there's gonna be another shift to higher ticket, but weekly payments Mm -hmm. instead of like this big lump sum of like you paid $25,000 up front for seven figure CEO instead of all that up front looking at $1,000 a week or $750 a week for a one year contract or a six month contract I'm seeing more of the shift there and it's just kind of a psychological shift um yeah that, it's interesting that I, it's a low ticket I, I did I, that's exactly what I did in January when I I, I now do I do weekly payments and I just find mm -hmm. that the um I don't know why it's also the way that I run the containers now a bit but definitely the renewal rates have gone up because I think 
rather than having that big hit at the end of each month, it's kind of a, a, a weekly payment, isn't it? Um, yeah. It's interesting, the school, I've not really dove into this. I've been involved in containers in school, but I've not done one myself. Um, I'm still very much close proximity coaching. I feel like the more you can help people implement, the better the results they get. And I think that's mm-hmm. what sometimes missing them with the, as you said there, like people buy in low ticket, but then, you know, for me, when I invested in you, I think it was, I think it was 35 when I invested in, it was a big deal for me back then. So I needed to make it work. Whereas mm-hmm. if it's two nine seven, you can kind of, it's a different mindset, isn't it? It's a different frame. Mm-hmm. So, um, but you kind of disappeared for a year, pretty much. Um, there wasn't much on social media. Um, obviously you weren't doing any coaching. Um, I don't think anyway, it wasn't, it wasn't on social media and, what um you seem to go back well into your health and fitness which obviously i'm a big fan of um and i think it is very much linked to business success do you want to just maybe talk about that journey a bit for yourself yeah um i didn't know it at the time what i was really doing but i think it's because i had the time and space to really feel into it and feel what my body needed that it kind of took the right direction Um, because I sold the business, I was completely depressed because I lost my vision of the future, just got out of a relationship. Um, I just had a massive concussion from, um, from getting in a car accident and all that. So I was depressed for like two months Hmm. and my switch, I remember just sitting on the couch, watching a shit ton of Netflix with my ex-girlfriend. It was like a terrible, like one to two months. And then I got back into the gym um, and went every single day because I was like, I'm tired of being just on the couch all the time. And I strengthened my physical energy over a period of time, four months, every single day, got fucking back into shape, ripped again. I was eating super healthy, high protein diet, all that. Um, And then I went to Shivananda Ashram Ranch in upstate New York. Because in 2018, my friend invited me to a Buddhist monastery, and it was one of the best um, experiences of my life. So I was like, I want to go back, do something like that again. And it really helped me process over that month my emotional energy. Um, And I got reconnected with myself again, and my mind was clear again. And then after that, because I was meditating for two hours per day. After that, I continued meditating every single day for six, seven months. And now, like, I'm like five, six days a week. Yeah. I don't hit it every single day. Um, but that helped me focus my mental energy. Um, so I was more in control of where I was putting my attention. Yeah. Um, and uh, it helped me reconnect to my soul and my spirit. Um, where I felt way more connected to myself, everything around me and all of that. And uh, like, I realized that if I just do those things on a daily basis, I exercise, um, I process my emotional energy, which now I do breath work every single day. That's one of my pillars. Um, And I focus my mental energy with my meditation. I can better be my spiritual energy, be grounded in the moment with everything around me. Um, And that was pretty much my healing process. And now I do those things on a regular basis. Over the course of that year, I went to Africa, I went to Europe, I went to uh, all over Central America, I got to meet really cool people. Um, And yeah, overall, it's an amazing experience and what the Masters of Fate Brotherhood was born out of um where it's holistic now it's not yep. just like burn yourself to the ground with business it's <laughs> like it's your physical mental emotional energy um and defining your vision your values your beliefs your purpose and creating your business around that and yep. staying in alignment with who we truly are um, yeah so Amazing. it's been a, it's been a cool journey yeah for sure I, and i think really where if you think back to the seven figure CEO style business that we all kind of bought into, there was, it was just all about cash really, wasn't it? It was like, let's just stack cash. And there was no care for burnout for your mental space, for your health, for your fitness. It it worked really well though. (laughs) (laughs) No, for stacking cash it did. But I think, 
you yeah. look at people that have been through it and it's like yeah and I, it's the model really it's like you know like whether you feel like okay well i don't want to do the dms anymore so i'm going to get a team of setters and closers you've still got to manage them like you're still involved in it you, it, it it doesn't matter even in the, the way you had your organization you're still having to manage the leaders of those people and the leaders of the market and the leaders of um and that's exactly why because I, I i grew mine to a team of 17 by sort of 2022 and i just i was the same i just hit burnout i was like i just i hate this i hate coaching people again i was coaching the wrong people and like the money just didn't it didn't matter and I think mm-hmm. then I've been through a similar thing with you where I got divorced and, you know, various life events and, and, and my fitness went, I started drinking a lot. And, and then you kind of have this reality check of this can't continue. Mm-hmm. But when you get back in that clear headspace again, you start to think, and that's where I kind of rebirth myself as I want to do business coaching, not just the Airbnb coaching because of the, you know, I, I really like marketing and sales and, and so on and so forth. But then um, a lot of the stuff that I talk with my clients um, is around like, w- w- what do you want out of this? Mm-hmm. And it can't be money. Like, what do you want out of it? And and I think if you build a business around that, like for me, it's like I want 15 holidays a year. That's all I want now. Travel experiences and that everything needs to be paid for to achieve that. And I see something mm-hmm. very similar in what, you, what you've done is like all this, you know, the, the brotherhood is like really digging into who we are and, and and then building a business around that first rather than letting the business build you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, dude, a hundred percent. I love all of that and what you're building now. Um, I, I think it depends on what the person really wants. Like mm-hmm. I know a bunch of eight figure, nine figure earners that fucking hate their life that like you get on a call with them and like just connection calls with some of my friends that are at that level and some of them have turned into complete like business robots like i won't say names but um and then like it's lack of uniqueness in this space as well where it seems like everybody's copying each other Mm. And people struggle for so long because they're just trying to be a model of someone else. But what I've found with myself and with my other clients is that when we can get to the core of it, well, what are what are our values? Like, mm. what do we actually care about? Like for me, my lifestyle values are community, connection, philosophizing, travel, and family. So I build my life and my business around that. Like build around brotherhood, sisterhood, get community and connection. I get to think deeply about subjects and create my own systems out of them, philosophizing. Travel, I get to travel wherever, whenever I want. Yeah. And family, I'm building my future family in a system with my girlfriend right now, right? Yeah. Um, and it gets to be super unique from that point where I'm not, I'm not looking to model somebody else. There are parts of other people's models that I'm using, but it's coming from the core of the, of the values, what we actually care about. Um, that actually makes a significant impact on this earth through yep. our dharma, through our purpose. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And you're very deep and always have been into systems, processes, Airtable. <laughs> I see you still use that a lot. Um, mm-hmm. Do you feel like that is the backbone of a good business? Yeah, and a good life. Um, I, I was thinking about buying the domain systems and spirituality. Because like those are the two things that I really love diving deep into. Um, And I feel like the better my systems are, um, the more I can tap into the present moment Mm -hmm. to not have worry and chaos and confusion in my life um, where I can more be myself connected to my soul. Um, So I build the systems with my team to be able to live more life, you know yeah uh, yeah yeah i think um no i, I see i i obviously have been watching since you came back on the social media and kind of really see how you, you you've dug into that uh in terms of the seven figure ceo you rebought the group I, if I'm <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah so what was kind of the the motive behind that and i know i know you tried to get oh you did have a few community calls from kind of the the old members and stuff and um you know, <laughs> 
obviously the, the fan base and the following is there. And you see so many people are absolutely crushing it that were in that container when I was there. You, you know, you yeah. must be immensely proud of of that and, and the community that you built. Yeah, I, I don't know how much I can talk about it, um, but it was essentially, number one, like um, Mike Chu, who bought the company, wasn't using it. So I reached out to him. We had a conversation. He's like, I got it back, right? Um, but number two is just like attention is the new gold in hmm. today's economy. And there was a group there that wasn't being used where people know, like, and trust me. Yeah. And there are a lot, there's a lot of attention with 23,000 members where it's like, why wouldn't I give it a shot and reach out to them and see if we can negotiate that back. Yeah. Uh, and we're still working on the strategy to fully, number one, put the most into it and get the most out of it. You know, yeah. what's the smallest input that will get us the biggest output? Um, right now it's, it's good, but it's like a, uh, third tier marketing system and lead gen system for us right mm -hmm. now. We're doubling down on YouTube school and go high level. Yeah. All those. Do, do, do you still think Facebook groups are as powerful as they were back 2020 era? I mean, like there's one side of it of, yes, it's way more saturated. Like I could put up a post in 2017 and make make fifty thousand dollars, like no big deal. Mm. Um, and then I would need to fill the group up again and all that stuff, and then I could make another one, fifty thousand dollars in a day. Sweet, awesome. Um, it's the hard launch posts don't work the same way anymore. Like the direct, here's the offer, that sort of stuff. Um, there are more intricacies and nuances with it now, um, but. I still believe that the community funnel is the best way of getting past 100K, 200K, mm -hmm. or just having a starting your brand, yeah. like a community either on Facebook or school is the easiest way to do it. Because our messaging can be, be complete shit, but if we're just consistent, we'll get people to know, like, and trust us and like get clients, right? Um, but if we're trying to put up a VSL and run paid ads or a webinar, our, our messaging needs to be really dialed in for that to work and that to convert. It's like community, best way to go starting out. Yeah. I see way too many people wasting time with like ads and VSLs and trying to make it perfect when the simplest way is still community. You know? Yeah. Well, if they haven't proven their organic message i think you see you're not gonna you're just gonna get more shit leads really if you, if you <laughs> yeah, run paid exactly. ads at it so um yeah so in terms of school like I, i'm not using school so it'd be interesting to just hear the thoughts um do you because my thought process with school is that it's another platform it's another app do you think it works for certain niches or do you think it works for all niches um what's kind of what's kind of your reason for using school over over say facebook for example uh, yeah, I, I think it definitely depends on the niche. Like we have clients who teach like trumpet and drums and choir, and that sort of stuff where their ideal client isn't really on school. Like mm -hmm. they're still on Facebook heavy. Um, but like with coaches, agencies, like sales professionals, like basically anybody in Alex Harmozy's and Sam Ovens's sphere, like it's one of the best lead generation systems uh to use nowadays like people find us in the discovery section and we get about 12 free leads per day from people mm -hmm. finding us in in discovery um and we use it for our fulfillment too i found it to be the easiest platform to create courses um because i can just use a loom link in my team and just pop it into a new course provide email updates that sort of stuff um so yeah, we're we're loving it so far. Awesome, awesome. So uh, I know your time is precious. Um, one last question, and I ask most of my guests this: If you could tell a younger Andrew <laughs> some valuable life lessons based on what you know now, what would be your biggest advice? Oh, that's a good question. I, I on the personal side, life isn't short. It's the longest thing we've ever done, the longest thing we ever will do. Um, I think when I was younger. 
I got caught up in like, oh, everything's falling apart and blah, 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 blah. Um, and that didn't serve me or the people that I surrounded myself with or my family or anything like that, thinking like that. Um, and then on the business side, it's just like, get as much attention as you possibly can and take massive and perfect action. Uh, I was trying to make it way too perfect in 2015, 2016. That's why I was $80,000 in debt, $600 to my name. Um, and then when I just started investing and taking the imperfect action on the investments uh, is when I started to see some results. Um, and that that imperfect action at the beginning turned into what it is today, which I'm pretty fucking happy. So. <laughs> yeah, I bet. No, uh, Andrew, it's been absolutely amazing. If anyone does want to reach out to you or learn more about the Masters of Fate, what's the best place for them to contact you? Yeah, the school group is great. Seven figure entrepreneur. Um, that's perfect. Or or my Instagram, um, Captain Cruzy uh, with a K or my my YouTube channel. I've got a bunch of freaking awesome trainings on systemizing our life, our finances, our relationships, our businesses. Um, and that's under Coach Cruzy, K-R-O-E-Z. -E. Amazing. Thank you so much for your time, Andrew. It's an absolute pleasure. Catch up Ryan, soon. Ryan, thank you, man. This is Take great. Care.